Good morning, Word of Life Church and all of our faithful YouTube friends. I'm trying to find an interesting place to uh, maybe video today. Up front by the highway, it's too noisy. Down the valley, it just looks too dried up. And so here we are in the hay shed, and we thought, well, a little different background. And so you can work with me on this. Anyway, so hopefully you can hear me okay. And uh, the wind's kind of picking up, trying to blow my camera around, but we're going to get there. Um, go with me, if you would. I want to just kind of slow it down and uh, get into the word here. Go with me to uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19. 1 Thessalonians 5, 19. And just as you're going there, we're just going to, uh, you know, have kind of a quick recap of the week. You know, the Bible says that we don't want to be ignorant of the enemy's devices. He's going to look for ways to try and mess your day up. He's going to look for ways to try and steer you off course. And so we're going to look at a few scriptures here today that I, I believe will just encourage you and build you up and keep you strong in the faith. Amen. And I'll just steady that phone there just a little bit. My good friend Jesse's going to get me figured out one of these days with this whole YouTube thing. So, the book of 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 19, it says, Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things and hold fast to what is good. You know, the word hold fast there and to what is good, it, it denotes soundness, tested and proven. So, holding fast to what is good is also referring to something that is tested and proven. We're going to hold that phone there for a minute. Tested and proven, right? I'm trying to test and prove this phone here. So you need to hold fast and, and, and prove what is good in your life. Well, what do we mean by that? Well, you could think of uh, Abraham. You could think of Joseph. They all had promises of God that whenever they were to step out, it seemed like things were being tested and proven all of the time. You know, uh, holding fast to something. I kind of got thinking about that in about 35 years, probably 40 years ago now, there was a movie called Cliffhanger. And uh, Sylvester Stallone, was he had uh, met this girl and he was teaching her about uh, cliffhanging. And so uh, she was really scared. They they had put this cable up between this uh, big crevice and uh, down was, you know, falling down was, you know, thousands of feet. But nevertheless, they were going to kind of uh, uh, shimmy of some sort across. Now, I'm afraid of heights, so I would never do that. But she was going to do that. But fear had gripped her. And so he had kind of talked her into doing it. And, and in the movie, she was going across sort of little by little. She was inching her way. Now, she wasn't a professional. And time and time again, Sylvester and his crew, they had tested and proven this. But in this case, her harness actually started to come undone. And if you'll remember in the movie, there's a classic shot where he had shimmied out on the cable to save his girl. And so he had uh, swooped down with his hand and grabbed hers. And so her hand was in his hand, but he had a glove on. And if you'll notice, you remember if, as he was trying to lift her up or to save her life, it had a shot of his bicep and it was just huge and actually much like mine, but I've got a shirt on today. But uh, uh, so as he was trying to just uh, hold that girl, um, you'll see the glove because it was was sweaty started to slip off and eventually unfortunately the girl fell to her death and so the rest of the movie was sort of you know he had such great remorse about this and then there was some other plots and things but it got me thinking the word says that we're hold fat to hold fast to our confession of faith we're to hold fast we're to prove we're to test we're to stay with because the enemy tries to get you to cause things to cause you to draw back or to slip so let's reverse back to Joseph. All right, let's think about that. Let's reverse back to Abraham. They had been given promises, and just like that glove slipping off Sylvester's hand, uh, there was opportunity for their lives to slip back into their old way, right? We know the Israelites used to complain and say, you know, you're, you know, we, we would have been better off, you know, we need you. But here we are, you know, trouncing across the desert trying to get to the promised land. And so the enemy tries to continually get you to pull back or to go back. Now, one thing Sylvester had for him is that he and his crew, they had tested and proven all these things. They had tested them. They knew he was the expert. They knew how to go out there on that cable and even how to rescue that girl. But the difference there, though, is her grip wasn't such, or if you would, he shouldn't have been wearing that leather glove. But, you know, maybe I'm sure they, anyway, they had to, I'm sure. 
But where I'm going with that is that somehow something started to slip and then she fell. In your life, God's got a plan for you. He's got things going on in your life. And at times, if we don't stay the course, and at times, if we don't begin, look, look what we read here. It says, test all things, hold fast to what is good. Now you think about that. Are there things in your life that try and erode your faith? Holding fast to what is good. Well, what's a simple thing? Well, if you turn on the wrong stuff and hear things that are going to pull your faith away, right? If you're going to listen to things that are very anti-God, if you're going to th listen to things that are uh, just going to cause your faith to say, you know what? God's forsaken us. Uh, uh, we're doomed. It's never going to get any better. Why do we even try? Well, what happens there is you will slip just like that glove coming off of Sylvester Stallone's hand. But it said, test all things. Hold fast to what is good. Hang on to what is good. Now, if you jump up to verse 16, just above that, how do you hold fast? Well, it says to rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. That's the tough answer here. Rejoice. If you think of the word rejoice, it means to rejoy. You need to begin to say, you know, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Begin to look at the scriptures and say, this is what God has promised. You can pray those promises. It says to rejoice and pray. Rejoice and pray. Then it says, for this is the will of God. Watch this. Pray without ceasing and in everything give thanks. You know, we don't like that part. We sort of only want to give thanks to the things, you know, when we're sitting down having a real good meal, then we give thanks. How about in the tough times of life when it looks like the promises of God have slipped away and you sl slow down just like Abraham had to. Joseph had to. So many men in the Bible. Moses had to. And they had to back up and say, God, you said in your word. And so today I'm rejoicing. I'm choosing to rejoy my life. I'm choosing to pray the promises of God. I'm choosing to speak out. Because when you do, you are holding fast. When you do, you are proving and you are being a professional, if you would, Christian. Because you're saying, this is my life. This is what I do. This is what God says. So no matter what, faith pushes us through. Now, faith believes the unseen. And then in the middle of all of that, even when you don't understand, even when you don't know which end is up, the Bible says that we just thank God in all things. Now, it didn't say that God was the creator or the, how do I say this? Uh, yeah, God's not the creator of your problems. Sometimes we are. But in the middle of all things, in the middle of all of those things that we don't understand, we can thank the Lord. The Bible says that, that he will deliver us out of all of our trials. He will deliver us out of all of our circumstances as we trust him and pursue him. But how do you do that? Well, you got to get that glove on. You got to get a grip. You know, sometimes you got to, there's an old phrase, get a grip on your lips. Sometimes you got to begin to, you know, pull yourself up by the bootstraps and say, I'm going to talk the word of God. I'm going to take that time in prayer. I'm going to give thanks to the Lord in all things. And in doing that, you are rejoying or rejoicing. Now, a couple other things I want us to look at. Um, so Paul here was talking about to hold fast, which is good. Hold fast to what is good. It denotes soundness, order, testing, and being proven. Well, you know what? How, how many times do we buy things and we want to make sure what were the tests like? What were they proven like? When they create cars, they'll, they'll drive them for like, you know, 500,000 miles with half the oil in them that they should and they want to test and prove and do everything to know that when they sell that car it's going to be everything that the buyer wanted well how many know in your life at times you maybe feel like you're the one out on that track that you're being tested and proven but you know what rejoice in that because know that God is bringing you through you know what Joseph went from the pit to the palace in one day. I know you're going to say, well, it was many days, but what I'm getting at is one day he was just sort of in a real sad situation and there was a turnaround and that was the next day. So whatever day that was, you don't know when your breakthrough is coming, but we're called to rejoice. We're called to be steadfast. We're called to be stable. We're called to be, you know, if you would, just hanging on to the word of God. You can't be hanging on to the words of people because they'll let you down. But it said to prove that, hold fast. Be sound, be tested, and be proven. And then you'll become reliable and true. How many know, isn't it exciting when, when, when the Word of God becomes reliable and true? When you think of the things that God has done in your past, that's how you give thanks. You rejoice yourself or rejoy by thinking of the times in the past where God has brought you through where God has carried you in the nighttime, where there's been a friend come in due season to just encourage you and lift you up. And so, uh, also, let's go to Hebrews chapter 10. 
we'll look at a few scriptures here. Hebrews chapter 10, uh, verse 23 specifically. It says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Here you go again to holding fast. Sylvester didn't hold fast. He was doing his best. If you watch that bicep, it was the veins and the muscles, and he had the strength, but it didn't matter how much strength he had because that glove was wet, because that glove was slippery, she slipped out of his hand and fell to her death. There are things in your life that if you're trying to hold fast to, but if they're not holding fast based on the Word of God, you know, if you haven't got the right contact, which is the Word of God, you can't just believe for anything and say, God, God's going to do that. You've got to find scripture that says, God says this is for me. And when you go through that testing and trying, when you go through that tough time in life, if you can go back to the word and say, just like the Israelites going to the promised land, they were promised the land. But in the middle of all of that, there was a lot of murmuring. In the middle of all of that, there was a lot of complaining. In the middle of all of that, there's a lot of things they weren't holding fast to. So I challenge you today. Let's look at this again here in Hebrews Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, praise God, let's have a look here, um, sorry the wind's blowing my Bible all over the place, let us hold fast to our confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful, you say pastor, I'm not always faithful, we're all not, let's be honest, there are things in our lives that we need to get right. There are things in our lives that we need to straighten around. But you can bring that to the Lord because He's always faithful. That's why we can say when we're weak, He is strong. That's why we can say that when we were in sin, yet God chose to send His only Son just for you and I. Because we weren't, if you would, being faithful to the part. But God was and God always will be. And it said, rejoice in the Lord because He who promised is faithful. What has God promised you today? What are you believing God for today? Maybe there's a struggle that you're going through and it feels like I just don't know what to do. Well, we read earlier, rejoice, pray without ceasing and be thankful. Thank God. Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. Being thankful in the tough times is what gets you to the good times. And in the good times, don't forget the tough times because those things are the things that will mold you and shape you. But remember, if you allow the negativity to invade you, if you allow the bad stuff, it's sort of like they say, you know, the on big cruise ships, you know, you could taint the water. You can have so much water to water everybody for weeks and weeks and weeks, but like one liter of oil or something goes in there, it'll just destroy and kill everybody on the ship. The point is this, don't take in the negative stuff because the negative stuff will taint you and you need to begin to rejoice in the Lord, be thankful in all things. And, and then it said, to pray without ceasing. So how do you do that? Well, thank God who causes us to triumph, but also to know that God is working in you, his will and his good pleasure. He is getting you where you need to be. You just need to stay the course and don't let yourself get off track. Don't let that glove slip off. Begin to say, you know what, pastor, maybe I've let things slip, but let's just get back on track. Let's just begin to hook that cable back up and say, God, I'm climbing the mountain with you and we're going to get there. Amen. Stay strong on the course. Remember, let's look at this one last thing. I just really want you to get this. Uh, remember, he, he, test it, prove it, and it will become reliable and true. And that's the only way you're ever going to get there. If you don't test stuff, if you don't push through stuff, if you don't stay in faith, you're never going to get to the place of being reliable and true. I tell you all of this today because maybe your life, you said like that glove, we've slipped. Maybe you say, Pastor, I've never made Jesus the Lord of my life. Most important part of this whole message is surrendering your life to him. Maybe you say, well, I, I, I'm going to get to heaven on good works. Didn't say you could. Didn't say you're going to get there on roller skates either. It says only by the blood of the lamb, only by having your sins removed and forgiven and forgotten, do we put that glove back on our life and not let things slip. When you receive Jesus as the center of your life, you have a brand new day. At that point, you'll be tested and proven. Didn't say you're going to have a life of, of flower beds of ease. You're going to have to prove some things. You're going to have to stay faithful to God, but he will carry you through if you trust him. Amen. Let's pray for everybody today. Most importantly, if you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, Lord Jesus, come into my heart today. I give you my sin. I give you my life. I give you my junk. And I release my life to you, and I want to live for you today. I want to be tested and proven. I want to know, Lord, that you live in me, because I believe you sent your son to die for me. And I receive him right now 
in Jesus' name. And Lord, anyone else that's watching today, Father, that testing and that proving, Lord, we're going to choose to rejoice in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Until next week, hopefully it's got to rain a little bit more, but I trust you're going to have a great week. God bless.